Yeah, let's start the class. Hello, and um, we just started talking about the uh, discussion. So in case you have only gotten partial points on discussions, even if they're in the past, you can always still go back and change that and complete that. I know it might seem a little uh, silly, but that way you can at least get all the points since those are mostly, uh, what are they, busy points to some level? Um uh, because you 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 can harvest them. It's not like you do one a test and then if you miss it, you just miss it. So please take advantage of that um, to not miss those sort of easy kind of points for the for the for the semester. Um, and yeah, know that they are open to go back to and uh, text me or or paranta me or email me and I'll and then I go and adjudicate them. I do about once a week. I try to go in there and just you know, check everything out and make sure we update what is updated from the discussions. The regular assignments, if you resubmit them, like some of you guys, some of you guys, most of you guys did great with this labeling and coloring stuff. Um, there is a there is a few that didn't do any of it, a few that missed some, and then a couple didn't color them. And so if I don't give you the points, you can always go back and then I give you the point value uh, once you resubmit it. So if you finish it and then put it back in and, and I'll get those back as new ones. So those should be uh, graded pretty swiftly once you turn them back in. Uh, having said that to start, um, any questions, uh, Ronald, I know you brought up the discussion or anything besides that or um, anything else from anyone? If not, how the ergonomic thing going? You guys all right with that? Have you done uh, that? what? The ergonomic evaluation. Have you done that yet? Uh, no. The ergonomic yeah, evaluation. Let me, oh, it's the workstation. Sorry, the workstation evaluation is what it's called. I think. Let me go into it. That was a uh, one this week, an assignment, a health kit assignment for this last week. And then this week, and then it's due on Sunday. So let's touch on that to start with again. That was in week five. So week five with it, we did um, the appendicular skeleton, particularly with the axial and the, uh, well, both axial and appendicular uh, on the label and coloring. And then here, see this one, home office ergonomic evaluation on the week five. It's not due till the 22nd, but I want to make sure you look at it. Um, because what I do in that, I try to integrate the learning that we do with the skeletal system and put it sort of in a, in the gravity environment of like the force going down and then, you know, uh, talk about how posture influences how we feel and how the body works over time and through, you know, gravity goes down and usually gravity wins when we get into our 50s and 60s. So we want to have a bit of awareness for example, like if you have your head over your shoulders, the head is 20, 12 pounds. But if your head is a few inches forward, your head substantially gets heavier. Not that it is heavier, but the body has to work harder to keep it on top and it doesn't fall down. And that's sort of what then that perceived 42 pounds looks like if it's like forward like that. I think that's a couple inches. Um uh, and so that's what I do in this evaluation. And we talk about a little bit about the biomechanics. Then I go into some <clears throat> tips of good posture. And then I want you to evaluate your workstation. And then lastly, we, we, we since, you know, it's talk about my posture, it's really hard to have uh, continuous good posture and you focus on something. So the other thing that's helpful is to work on some counter stretchy type stuff. And I want you to go through those uh, uh, reading through those and then like pick one and do that for five days and sort of see if that makes an impact on you. I'll describe that down here. So I go through all of those different ones that are impactful for sitting and then you just choose one and, and you know, and do it for five days, like on the hour when you're sitting kind of thing. So just... Um, the, 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 and then and then write that down that you did it and then that's one of the things each of the section has some questions around it so I want you to also part of the, the work on this is then is, is to read through them let me go back to the first one read through them like biomechanics and then at the end there's some questions around it this is pretty 
you know, stuff that I talk to my patients a lot about. And so I figured it's probably helpful to go into it a little bit. And and things like this, once you understand sort of how this kind of works a little, it's not complicated, but from a therapeutic perspective, it's quite highly sophisticated. Um, uh, uh, this is not, you know, this is what we therapists do with the patients in the field and figure out what's weak and what's strong and so forth. But since the knowledge is to me what we're doing already, I think it's, it's not that complicated. I want to bring it into this class and have you guys uh, learn also that kind of stuff, not just names of bones kind of things. Does that make sense, Ronald? Or, or I should say any questions or any thoughts on that. No. Oh, there you go. I don't really have any questions on it. Okay. But just make sure you guys get to that. Um, since there is a component of doing the stretching, make sure you try to look at that um, earlier during the week, if you could. Uh, I have, I've seen the stretching. Okay. So you've seen this one. Okay, great. So then hopefully some of you guys who are going to watch the video um, uh, will hopefully pick that up. If we... Last week I scrambled, so I didn't make a video. I ended up having two classes in the same time. That was my fault. Um, and so the video would be a little bit choppy. So that was finishing up week five. And then um, this week we're looking at week six. So we're getting into the musculature um, a little bit. And have a few questions and things around it. So I do have a I do have a session on the physiology, how it works, and with questions. I know even though if it's anatomy class, but I want to have us to understand some of the cons the ground foundation concepts, uh, because you know once you go further, you probably end up potentially having to take a physio class, uh, and then you just have a, a decent starting point. And the other thing is, uh, it, it it helps us understand the anatomy better as well if we get a little bit of the physio but there is no um there is no <clears throat> no other thing other than the questions and once once you don't the questionnaires you go with that piece of knowledge um and then we start going into the trunk muscles and the trunk muscles um are sort of our muscles of the axial skeleton that's the, the trunk itself. So we're looking at things that move the neck around. <clears throat> and the way I do it, I group it sort of in, when I look at muscles, I group it in who moves whom around. Uh, and so one set is like who's moving the neck around and, and the head. And then the next one is uh, the, the back muscles, or actually I group them functionally. When we get to the axial the appendicular, the, the arm and the leg muscles, we really going to go like, well, who's lifting the arm and who's bringing it down and who's bringing it back? And so that's the way I do it there. Um, here we do the neck like that, and then we got to just go to the area because the the back muscle is pretty vast, um, has has a lot of layers to it, and, 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 and functionally, it's interesting. Some of it is functionally moving the body around, but then the deep, deep muscles also are, we learn over the years that they're, they're more proprioceptively helping the body understand where it is in space um, uh, besides moving it around. Some of the muscles that are superficial, the top layer muscles move the body a lot and then, uh, or move the big parts of the body. And then the deep, deep muscles on the movement side, they move much more segmentally. So they do much more postural. That's generally the case. The superficial muscles on the surface are the big movers, and the deeper we go, the more we get into holding the body together. We have two kinds of muscles. We have muscles, I mean, multi, many, many different types, but we can group and sort of in, in muscles that move the body, but then also muscles that hold it together, the postural muscles. And so the deeper muscles generally are more holding the skeleton together, and then the more superficial ones are moving the body parts around. Hmm. Got a little thing in my throat. All that wind brought in some allergies for me. So, um, and then each muscle <clears throat> on these charts, I I um I talk about where they're attaching. I think it's on the first tab. I actually spell it out once. Let's see. Yeah, here I see origin is where the body, the muscle sort of anchors into the bone, and muscles go from bone to bone. These these moving muscles. Anything other than the facial muscles that who attach into the skin, 
The other skeletal muscles, they all go from bone to bone. And so the origin is one attachment to a bone that we describe, and that's the origin place. And, and usually that's the part of the body that is stable. And then all that muscle really does, uh, if you take the essence of the physiology, a muscle actively shortens, so it actively contracts. It doesn't do anything else. Anything else is passive. So the letting go, that's a passive event. Um, for example. And so when we look at the muscle contracting, let's say we have a biceps that's attached on the shoulder and that's then the origin because if I move my elbow, I don't move the shoulder really, I move the elbow joint. And so the other attachment of a muscle is known as the insertion and that's usually the movable part. And so in a biceps, that would be the forearm and then that moves. And then of course we can get more and more specific which part of the forearm, which is, where it comes in handy that my my lists of terms, I know Mr. Strayers have a little bit different, but my list of terms are built in a way that they, I use, I, I try to teach you the, the stuff that comes back again, like the muscle attachments on the bone, the prominences, for example. And then the last term here, that is the action. And that is what does, a do, what does the muscle do when we activate it, when we shorten it? And so you just visualize while well, the two attachment points, they get closer, what would that do? I actually, in a biceps, you can even take your two fingers and you can bring, it, you know, bring the two ends of the muscle together and you, you see what it does. You can visualize it that way. <clears throat> uh, if you have any questions, just make sure you speak into me. Don't uh, hesitate. Um, um, I want to make sure this stuff is clear-ish as much as possible. Um, the, the other thing that I've done in these chapters when we get to the muscles, I clipped cadaver videos um, from a, a source that was from the American Surgical Corporation. And so if you click on that, you're going to go, it's going to take you out of the thing, but it's going to take you into, uh, it's in Dropbox, but you have, all the muscles that we described are shown. Can you actually see that? Hold on. Yeah, are shown on on a on a cadaver um, uh, specimen, uh, and really you can see the points and everything. So if you can handle this kind of stuff, you're not going to see a face. So don't you know where you see the muscle, the meat part. Then uh, I would, if you can handle that, and, and and I would look into that as a way to really understand what the muscle does and where it's attached. And the guy is very funny. He's like a British guy. He talks really boring, but it's perfect because the clips are like, look at this. This clip is like six, a minute long. Sorry. A lot, most of them are not that long. Most of them are like a few 15, 20, 30 seconds long. Um, so that's an other piece that I think is kind of interesting. Let me see. Did I put that? Oh, yeah. Look up here. I also actually have study tips, which is the cadaver clips are in here. But then the other thing I did is I, gave you a link to a, um, a document, a PDF that has every muscle sort of outlined. These we're gonna um, have outlined as a single muscle. And then you could, if you want to take that, you know, cut it out and make flashcards with it. So that's why I, I got it. There's more muscles on this document than we have uh, because it's just a whole document and I didn't make it. Somebody gave it to me at some point. Uh, but I thought that was kind of helpful. And then the third thing that I have created myself for my own studies, uh, working on patients, is a muscle picture that's mostly for electronic use because I put all the muscles that we really talk about on one slide and you can sort of zoom in and then you can go like, oh, look, that's this part and that's this part that we did. So see if that might, you know, this is not, you don't have to do these things. That's just food for thought and potential help if your study ways are those ways. Um, I just want to, I realized at some point, let me just give you what I also have that it really helped me get deeper in the studies. And so those are some of the pro tips in these next few chapters as we get to the muscles. Then, okay, so we have back neck muscles, we have back muscles. Then we got two other sets that are sort of, in the front then one is the breathing muscle so we got to talk about who's doing the breathing in the in the body and, and the interesting thing is the breathing is really who's expanding the chest 
and then the lungs are attached to the chest and they get pulled with them and that it expansion of that volume inside the lung makes the extra the air from the outside move into the body because there's a vacuum that's create gets created inside um the chest and so that's the flow of breathing really so it's really a muscular um uh, event to move the chest or we don't have to bring the chest up we can actually move the diaphragm down so the lower part here see the down in here below the the the, the breastplate here the is, is the diaphragm that goes up like that. And then when it contracts, it brings it down. And then that increases the volume of the lungs as well without actually increasing the chest size. Um, and then that's a view from underneath, as we can see, here's the ribs um, uh, attachment and the cartilage, here's the sternum. Uh, and then that's from underneath looking up uh, into the diaphragm. So that's a very interesting muscle, actually, uh, because we only have a few muscles that sort of go across the chest and not lengthwise or diagonally wise. So that's that's an interesting one. Um, and then the last one set that we do here is the abdominal muscles. And that's the stuff, you know, keeps keeps everything tied up inside in the front. Uh, because we don't have a rib cage, we got to have some seriously decent muscle protection for the gut. And of course, also move the trunk around. And then this is also where we have the so-called core muscle, especially this one. This is one that wraps around, around the body in this way. It's not up and down or diagonal. It's just transverse. That's why it's called transverse abdominis um, or transverses. Uh, depending on you know which book you're looking at. Uh, yeah, that's another interesting point. When you look at the muscle names, make sure you try to you know kind of read into it stuff. Like for example, the um, external oblique. Well, oblique is a, is a diagonal type of muscle. So that muscle is named by what it looks like. Um, or the transverse abdomen is the same thing. It goes across. Uh, so the muscles often have names that are sort of sensible, like this here is the intercostal muscle. Well, costal is rib. So if you remember from the first chapter, those names of body part things, I don't know if costal is in there. I think it should be in there. Uh, costal means rib. So inter means be between. So intercostal means the muscle inside in between the ribs. So that's, to me, one of the easiest ways to learn these structures is by... Um, making sense of the naming of them so that's what i wanted to say about that and then let's see i think that's pretty good for that is that pretty all right with you guys there are questions that come up as i'm going through it no, not at all. no? good oh wait This is wrong. I gotta move this to one week down. Ergonomic eval discussion. That will be next week. That's a mistake. Sorry about that. Because we're just finishing up that this week. So I'm gonna move that to week seven. Uh huh. What do we do about the scoreboard assignment? The who? The scoreboard assignment. Isn't there? Is there like a scoreboard we? Yeah, we just upload download one. or no, do we make it? Just uh I mean there was initially, but at this point you just just upload what notes you took for when you did the assignments. Okay. And you'll be all right. I'm gonna work on that a little bit too for the next semester. I've I've written it down in the assignment, but it's only that one, and then I have an announcement on it uh that I did where I uploaded another card, but uh, but just do however you took notes or pictures or whatever you took. Just do do some of that. What I want you to do okay. is make, make sure you uh, do the eval second time, the self evaluation, and then you know compare of like how did you do or did that help or you know have a little reflection on that. All right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. With many of my um, on my end at least, uh, I try to also have this class be sort of a way for you guys or any class, figure out how do I study best, right? And so some of you guys do, instead of just labeling, coloring the sheets or the annotation on the tablets, they actually making the flashcards and then upload the flashcards. And I'm completely cool with that. I think that's fantastic to 
Uh, and so I'm, I take a lot of different ways of doing the material. And that's also why if you don't get credit, then we go back and we say, oh, look, that looks great, but finish it up a little bit there. And I give you feedback. And so it's a, it's a collecting of points. It's not like a, a, a one deal and it's all done. Um, if that makes sense. We call them, well, no, I forgot the name now, what we call them. They're the assignments or have a specific name that we sort of massage the material into the brain. So this will be moved, but this week, since we're still talking about bone and we're talking about muscle, core muscles, I have the next health kit part because that's the posture evaluation because that's also very important, I feel. And kind of, of course, most of us find that somewhat boring, but I think it is pertinent and I would like to spend, have you guys spend a half hour or so, a little bit of time on this topic. And uh, what we do is we we basically, um, you know, it, I had to kind of figure out how to do it. So we basically take and do it ourselves because we're not generally in class in the online session. Uh, but we place some kind of marker, a dot or a or a or a piece of paper on a tape or something, and place them at different parts in the back, in the side, and on the front. So partly you're learning the terms. That's part of the dealio with this situation here. Uh, where they are. And of course, you can look them up because I have myself here as an example. Um, and then um, and then after you do that, I want you to uh, mark, put a camera somewhere or have somebody take a cap, have a, be able to take a picture of you with the phone and then and then close your eyes and march in place, which is very important because then the brain, the eyes can't adjust your posture in the space. And so, because you march in place with your eyes closed and you keep your eyes closed and doing that, you feel like, where do I feel right and balanced? But you don't open your eyes because as soon as you open your eyes, your brain will readjust to make sure you're staying straight because it doesn't want to stay stand crooked. But if you don't open your eyes, you keep some of those unconscious patterns that the body has and then you it picks up a little bit more of, of of some issues that can come up and for example you know if we have a posture where the head is really forward like mine is pretty forward you know so my head is probably not 12 pounds my head is probably more like 25 pounds or something perceived by my muscles and what does that do with my muscles well guess what i'm going to get tired faster because muscle mass is one of the most uh, energy consume, consume one of the most energy consuming body part besides the brain. Uh, the muscles use a lot of ATP, and so the more work they have to do, the faster I fatigue. And so that's you know maybe a mo more of a motivator than you know poor postural call you standing crooked. That's like depending, we don't you know it's really. I don't know. When I was 20, I didn't really care about that much for that. And I was 30 neither. And by 40, I sort of like started having crooks in my back. And it's like, oh, my Lord. Uh, but so, you know, that's what I want you to do. And then I, you take pictures, you take one from the back or have somebody take it or do it with like, you know, a timer or something uh, from the side and from the front. And then you you can do it on the picture and just analyze your lines and connect the lines together. Uh, the sideways, the dots connected, and then the up and down, also the dots connected. And you see, oh, look, there is not quite straight. It should be a little straight, but it goes over a little bit. Or on the side, oh, this head is a little forward. And then that's your postural sort of analysis of yourself. Um, um, you can also transfer it to a, um, a schematic that I think somewhere I should have that. Where is that? Where is that? God. Oh, here. Here's the worksheet. So you can print, you know, go here and then click that and then um, that should show up. And then you can print that out and sort of do that on there. But you don't necessarily have to do that. Well, actually, I think you should do that because I, from a, I mean, unless you don't care, but I don't want, I want to make sure if you feel self-aware don't put your pictures into the net you know don't don't do that just just give you the schematic if you don't care i i don't care i'm not going to judge how 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 things are looking i'm looking at you doing the exercise 
And then here, look, see, this is the analysis that you do. So you just read through that. And then this is actually a video that I like to from somebody else doing it. A physical therapist is doing that. Just, you know, look through that to give yourself a little a little dose of that. My mom said, I'm always standing crooked. That's what my mom did to me. Don't stand like a monkey, she said, because I was having the head down and caving in. Uh, but then, you know, watch this and get a little input and a little food for thought. And then uh, answer these kind of questions as well um, to make sure you work through the process. And then we're going to do some more exercise things and a little more stretchy things. But if you've seen most uh, generally, these are very similar to the stretches that were already in the workstation. I just don't do as many. Here I focus on the most culprit that we have when we do a postural analysis, and that is the head forward posture. Pretty much anybody who looks into a computer is going to have a head forward posture. And that's one of the biggest things that cause us headaches and fatigue and, and, and numbness in the hand and all that kind of stuff is all related to that posture. Because when you actually look at that posture from the side, the biggest culprit that we have is if we sit like this is okay, but if we don't, if we cave in forward. And that's really the biggest culprit that we see in the field with us human beings who sit a lot. That sitting is, you know, it's all right. I mean, we got to sit. It's just the way it goes. But it's not necessarily natural for our body to do that that long as we're doing it. Um, good. Any questions on that? And then you do that. Also, you do a little bit of posture. You do some stretching. You did. Good. Good. So that's, I hope, pretty straightforward. Otherwise, just shoot me a text or a pad, I mean, a, a, a pronto. <clears throat> um, the emails I get least fast because the texts and the prontos give me a, um, give me a ring so I can catch it. Um, okay, so lastly, here we have the labeling. That's the same thing as we did with the with the bones. Now in the muscles, we just let me go to the sheet here, the anatomy picture. In the muscles, we just also do some writing uh, that talks about where the muscle attachment is. So that's a little bit more involved with that. But that way, you work through the muscle attachments and the actions as you work them. Um, I don't know how uh, Mr. Stray is doing the lab test, but I often do mostly uh, aiming the muscle. You know, these attachment points, uh, you, you, you really, I think you understand what the muscle's doing if you work through that. So that is the coloring part. And then, of course, you can always look at the video where I go through it um, multiple times. And these are the muscles that we're covering uh, as a list. All right. I think that pretty much it, except for the Padlet at the end, but that's hopefully fairly self-explanatory at this point, right down here. I try to go through them and, and make sure with those, if you don't get credit, go back and, and put your name on the thing so I can give you credit and then probably text me that I can go back and look at it. Um, it's a little, I don't know, we might have to phase out Padlet, but I like it as a tool. It's just a little cumbersome. It's just back and forth. Um, good. So that's it for my end.